Welcome back to our program, Prepare to Meet the God. This is a program that we have set out to teach the truth unhindered from the lies and private interpretation of man that brings confusion in our lives. All these efforts are made in order to lead us to the right way to prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the sixth of the Law and Grace series, wherein we will be tackling one of the more controversial aspects of the Bible in the sense that the world is full of arguments to excuse us from obeying the law of God. However, in the Holy Scriptures are presented to us the simple and plain truth that goes in harmony with the true ways of our God. Previously, we have understood about the covenant of grace and the roles that God, humanity, and the law plays in this covenant, which we are the ones that keep the covenant with God. And the law is a great condition for us to become a part of the covenant of God. In this episode, we will be talking about faith and works. And as we start, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we hallow thy name in this time of prayer and return to you the glory and thanks that you deserve for your unending love and grace that you have given to us. Right now, at this moment of study, we ask for your presence to guide us into a righteous understanding of your words as we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us of your will. May thou bless the channel and the people who are listening to your words and forgive us all for the sins that we have made against thee in our words, thoughts, and acts. And all these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us begin this study by reading in the book of Romans chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, saying, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. This passage is what the world uses to say that Abraham was not justified because of works, but only through faith. And that faith or belief that the world limits to intellectual acceptance is something that will admit us to heaven one day, just from a mere belief in God. However, it means much more than just that. In the Bible, righteousness is obedience to the law. The law demands righteousness, and this the sinner owes to the law, but he is incapable of rendering it. The only way in which we can attain to righteousness is through faith. By faith, we can bring to God the merits of Christ, and the Lord places the obedience of his Son to the sinner's account. Christ's righteousness is accepted in place of man's failure, and God receives, pardons, justifies the repentant, believing soul treats him as though he were righteous and loves him as he loves his son. This is how faith is accounted righteousness. And the pardoned soul goes on from grace to grace, from light to a greater light. However, that faith that works our saving is a faith that is a living faith, a faith that has substance. And we will understand what makes faith a living faith shortly. So in Romans chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, we understand that one factor for the righteousness of Abraham was faith, but his was a living faith and a faith that has substance. Now, the world thinks of faith in a manner that deceives the people about the way to salvation, that it takes no effort on your part, my brethren, and mine just to be saved. This is the stand of any Protestant church, that it is through faith alone that we are saved. However, if you speak of faith, the Bible speaks of it here in James chapter 2, verse 17, saying, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So God requires living faith from us, a faith that is evidenced by the acts that we do and the will that we follow. For the faith of Christ comes together with the keeping of the commandments. And that is the characteristic of the people of God that we can read in the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, saying, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, going back to what the world holds about Abraham, if Abraham only had faith without works, his faith would have been dead. There has been no occasion in the Bible that faith was not accompanied without works. For the great evidence for true and living faith is by keeping the law of God. That is why my brethren, as the Apostle Paul gave a stern rebuke to the people of his time for greatly misunderstanding the working of faith, it is also true in our time. Let us read the true teaching of the Apostle in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So Abraham, the father of many generations, 
evidenced his faith by the keeping of God's commandments, for he had living faith. And we give evidence to that faith in Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, saying, Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And it was at every command that God gave to him that he was found faithful in obedience. Now, let us go back to James chapter 2, verse 17 to 26. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, and the devils also believe and tremble. The Bible speaks, Faith without works is dead. And it is a satanic doctrine to believe that it is only by faith that we are justified and we would be saved. Why? For even the devils themselves, they believe, but with them are no works. So the only difference that the people of God makes with devilish doctrines or the devil himself is this faith that is evidenced by a living connection with God through the keeping of God's commandments. So it means that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Now it continues, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, for it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, let us cross over the teachings of the world on how they understand the workings of faith. Among the Protestant churches, which is generally teaching that it is faith alone that could save us, without any works on our side, in a book called United Methodist Doctrine, page 196, it states here, Because sanctification is a real change that results in a greater holiness, it is easy to assume that it is earned by an individual's doing. Wesley wants to correct that misinterpretation. He said, I have continually testified in private and public that we are sanctified as well as justified by faith. And indeed, the one of this great truth does exceedingly illustrate the other exactly as we are justified by faith, so we are sanctified by faith. Faith is the condition and the only condition of sanctification exactly as it is of justification. It is an incomplete statement. As the Protestant churches declare that faith is the condition of sanctification, we understood in the previous episode that the condition for justification and sanctification is the keeping of the law of God. In Romans chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So, the faith that is unto salvation is not a casual faith. It is not a mere consent of the intellect. It is belief rooted in the heart that embraces Christ as a personal Savior, assured that he can save unto the uttermost all that come unto God by him. And that belief on Christ as a personal Savior is guided and dictated by the Savior himself, as he said in John chapter 14, verse 12, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. It means that we need to follow the footsteps of our great exemplar. As our faith must be evidenced by our actions, it is Christ's actions that we must follow, and the work that he did is what we must do. What is this work that Christ has done to set as an example of what we must do? The Bible declares that in the book of John chapter 15 verse 10 saying, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. That is why the psalmist David, who was the one that described the blessedness of a man whom God imputeth righteousness without works, it means the unmerited grace of salvation from our past sins, endorses as well the keeping of the law of God, as he said here in Psalms chapter 40, verse 8, saying, 
I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. David himself was a commandment keeper, but this ability to keep the commandments of God, the evidence of a living faith, is all because of God. He says to us in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So David, as well as Abraham, were justified by faith. But it also means that without God, the law cannot be possible for us to keep. For without him, nothing good is possible for us to do. Furthermore, it adds here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, saying, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. As Christ lived the law in humanity, so we may do if we will take hold of the strong for strength. And they will receive not only wisdom, but strength, power for obedience, for service will be imparted to them and to us as Christ has promised. Whatever was given to Christ, the all things to supply the need of fallen men was given to him as the head and representative of humanity. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Those that say that the law is hard, even impossible to keep, that teaching is a teaching that estranges us from God. Why? For as God has promised that he will give grace for us to keep the law of God, and all things can be done through Christ that strengthens us, if they teach that the law is hard to keep and even impossible, then Christ is not with them. For they do not have the strength and the true grace that emboldens us and guides us to keep the commandments of God. So let us read in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, saying, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So faith and works go hand in hand. Why is it that sanctification and justification is only imputed to one who has faith and not from works. Because, my brethren, our works have no value and nothing good in them for ourselves. It is God that works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. It means to say that the process of justification and sanctification is a process wholly reliant to our God. However, faith is something that we must practice on our part. That faith will enable us to take hold of the promise of strength to obey his commandments and to receive pardon from our sins. This is what we must consider well. If we truly have faith that God will save us and forgive us from our sins, it means that we will live a life believing that God has forgiven our sins. To live according to that faith is to cease from sin because we believe that sin has been forgiven. However, if we continue in sin, we are faithless in the sight of God, for if we do believe, then our lives will work in conformity to what we believe in. And for our last text, we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, saying, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Now, righteousness is obedience to the law. The law demands righteousness. And this we, the sinners, owe to the law. But we are incapable of rendering it. The only way in which we can attain to righteousness is through faith. By faith, we can bring to God the merits of Christ, and the Lord places the obedience of His Son to the sinner's account. Christ's righteousness is accepted in place of our failure, and God receives, pardons, justifies the repentant, believing soul treats him as though he were righteous and loves him as he loves his son. That is what we have understood. This is how faith is accounted for righteousness and the pardoned soul goes on from grace to grace, from light to greater light. And our part in sanctification and justification is our willingness for God to work in us his good pleasure to give us power to obey the law, which is the work that he seeks from all of humanity. Now to end this study, let us pray. Our Father in the high heavens, we humbly come before thee, glorifying thy name in gratitude and praise for the goodness that you have given to us, especially by liberating our minds from the false understandings and false teachings of the churches of this world that have been deceived by Satan and ultimately became his instruments to erase the Ten Commandments from the minds of the people, the great requirement to salvation. 
We only ask for your grace and your strength for us to keep the law and prove ourselves faithful unto you. We believe that you will pardon and you will save. And so we ask for forgiveness for the sins that we have made against thee and against our fellow men. Only bless the listeners who have taken interest in the truth of your words. Let your light shine abundantly in their hearts so that we all may prepare ourselves for your soon return in this world. All these things we pray and hope to receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right now, my brethren, God is calling for His people who love Him and will show this love to Him by the obedience of His law in giving evidence to their faith as a living faith. And He is calling you the same. If you feel the need to know more, make sure to contact us through these platforms and like, subscribe, and make sure to share these videos to your family and friends so that we all may be blessed by the words of God. And once more, may God's blessing be upon you.